Okay, let's look at the Echo plugin next. Now, this is one of the new ones. Um, this is only available in Live 10. Um, and uh, it's a little funky. There's a lot of cool stuff in here. This can be like a total sound design uh, kind of plugin. Um, or, you know, it could be an, a normal delay type plugin if you wanted it to be. But I just want to show you something. Um, let me show you just really quick some of the crazy sounds you can get out of this. I'm going to run our same drum loop through it, but I'm just going to play it for like a second and then I'm going to pause it. Okay, so here we go. Okay, so now I've paused it, but just listen really close. Nothing's happening, but just keep waiting. That, that can go on forever. That could go on forever. Um, so that just kind of shows you what what this thing can do. So I just ran a little bit of signal through it at first, and it went through the plugin, and then it kind of died away, and then it kind of came back because I was messing with it. Um, so let's look at what this thing can do um, real quick. So uh, we have three tabs at the top, okay? So let's start with the echo tab. Over here, we have familiar stuff. We have our, the volume of our input signal uh, and the amount of feedback. You can see that reflected here. Let me close our filter for a second. And then up here, we have the left and right uh, echo. Um, this little thing is going to link them together. If you want them unlinked, just click it. And then you've got separate controls for the left and right side. Um, and our rhythm amount here. So it's a little bit different than the way it worked in the other ones, uh, but a similar concept. So each of these rings is giving us like the uh, uh, a time that it's going to be fed back. Okay, so you can kind of imagine that each one of these is the signal coming back again, and each one of the white dots represents an eighth note. Okay, so if I turn up feedback all the way even like way higher, then these just get infinitesimally small and quieter, right? Now, one thing to note here is that feedback, 100% feedback would mean that the signal's going back into the delay again at the same volume, right? So normally we want feedback to be something less than 100%. If you go up to 100%, uh, it's never gonna decay. But this, feedback lets us go up to 150 percent which means it's actually going to increase on itself and get louder and louder every time so uh play with that it's fun you gotta be careful with that a little bit and these uh buttons will help you control that a little bit this one uh gives you a little bit of feedback or sorry a little bit of clipping on your input just a nice little crunch on your input and this one inverts the feedback amount so um we're going opposite now of what we were uh what we were doing okay we have a filter down here so if we want to filter the signal we can do it uh you can control it with these parameters down here uh here's our filter type or you can turn it off with that and leave it on and then some global controls over here okay so we can add some reverb to it if we want stereo spread the output signal and our trusty dry wet mix. Going over to modulation, what we have here is the ability to kind of modulate 
what's happening uh, coming out of the echo. So we can set a waveform. We can set a phase if we want. And notice we've got kind of an orange line and a blue line, right? So here's our orange stuff and here's our blue stuff. So we can set the orange line to be the delay time and the filter cutoff. And we would just give it some. Okay, you gotta give it some of that. And that's, so that's gonna be modifying in a sine wave in this case, the delay time and filter cutoff. We can also do the envelope, which is kind of sort of like a dry wet mix for your modulation. You can kind of think of it that way. So 100% would be all um, modulated and zero would be no modulated. It's a little more complicated than that, but that's the basic gist of it. And then character are a couple other fun things you can do. Gate in ducking kind of walks us through what is going to be applied. So if we turn on gate, what we're saying is uh, it has to be uh, this volume in order to go into the echo. Everything under this volume is going to be let go and not applied to the echo effect. Ducking is kind of the opposite. It has to be under so this one has to be over this volume. This one has to be under this volume. So imagine you've got like a snare crash and you want the delay on the actual hit of the crash, uh, but not on the sustain. Ducking would help you do that. But let's say you want the effect on the sustain, but not the crash. Uh, that would be ducking. So gate and ducking. Noise just adds a good bit of noise into your effect. And wobble, I'm not exactly sure what they're technically uh, using here to create wobble, but it does exactly what it says it's going to do. Adds a little bit of wobble to it. Crank up this morph amount and the amount of the effect here to get some really cool uh, effects. This repitch uh, isn't probably what you think. What repitch is, is classically with a delay effect, what happens is if you adjust the speed of the delay while there's sound going through it, just mathematically that creates what sounds like a big pitch bend because the speed is going up. Um, so if you have this on, it's gonna do that, that thing where if you adjust the speed of the delay, it goes up, let me just try it. Oh, I'm not hearing hardly any of my wet. Let's try that again. You hear that? The pitch is going up and down. Um, if I turn this off and I'm doing that, then it kind of it just kind of crossfades between the old speed and the new speed. So you don't get that that pitch ramping kind of sound. So it's it's a bit of a subtle thing, but if you're automating the um, echo amount that might be something you want to turn off if you want. Cool, so really fun effect. Have some fun uh, playing with that one.